Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another show. It's the Lab 78 over here on Espresso with Sky. My name is Sky. Hope you guys are having an awesome two weeks. Yes, we've had two weeks since our last Lab 78. Hope you guys had an amazing time in, uh, well, especially here in Malaysia. We've been stuck in like this movement control order and it's gone, it became enhanced, which means uh, it's even more stricter and more tighter. So yes, I've been going a little bit crazy over here in Malaysia, but it's been fun. Uh, if this is your first time here, if you haven't done so, go ahead, hit the subscribe, smash that notification bell. And if you wanna help us out, go ahead, hit the like button and comment. Now, if you wanna comment, you don't know what to comment about, I got a good question for you today is, do you believe in like faith healing? Now, do you believe in healing? Okay. Have you guys ever seen it before or not? Go ahead and write it in the comments. I would love to hear how everything's going. Those of you guys who want to support us here on uh, on Espresso with Sky, uh, go ahead and we have PayPal and we also have buymeacoffee.com. So go ahead. Yo, by the way, this is from buymeacoffee.com. I got a coffee today. Thank you so much, all of you over there that are supporting me. Okay, so uh, a couple things before we get into today's episode, uh, some updates. Like some things that are going on around and uh, in my life. And number one is I finally got my interview date with immigration, right? It's pretty crazy because of the uh, because of all the lockdowns and stuff. I've had an extra two months over here, which is like 60 days. And, um, you know, it's free, which is great. Ha ha. Right? Curtis Fu. Ha ha. <laughs> I don't have to pay for anything and I don't have to marry anyone either. Uh, but also, uh, it's, it's July 23rd. July 23rd. Okay, so that is my actual interview date. It's like at 9 a.m. Uh, looking forward to it, seeing what kind of what what God has in store for me on July 23rd. It's kind of weird though, if you think about that. July 23rd is like two weeks around the corner, right? It's about two weeks away. And the crazy part is, it's like my life could change in two weeks, right? It's true, like in two weeks, I could be out of the country. So it's something that I kept out of my mind because, you know, the immigration was closed and stuff. But now that it's open, it's kind of crazy, don't you think? Like even for me, I, I can feel it in my heart. Like, wow, change is possible that change is coming in the future. And if change comes in the future, like it's, it's uncertainty, right? So on top of a pandemic, a pandemic plus uncertainty, if I have to grab all my stuff and move out, and actually, this is something that happened to me just uh, maybe two and a half, no, less than two weeks ago. I had my first anxiety attack. Okay, you're like going, what? Like, it's not a panic attack, it's not something freaky. It's like a level lower than a panic attack. It's an anxiety attack. You know when you're like really nervous about something and you're so anxious, like some people have a test coming, people have a job interview, and it feels like something's pressing your chest and your heart is just pounding and pounding. I couldn't even sleep. And it was like, uh, it, it was like for five hours straight, just pounding and pounding. And it was so weird, my first anxiety attack, and I thought to myself like, wow, it's really crazy uh, how much this pandemic and all these lockdowns are affecting people. It's much more than you think. I've never had an anxiety attack before, but in the situation, just something popped up, some uncertainty popped up. It wasn't even the interview. Some uncertainty popped up. In my head, I knew it was okay but my heart was just pounding for hours and hours. I, I didn't know what to do. And I was like, <gasps> what's gonna happen? And um, I had a good friend of mine, another pastor friend of mine. And uh, he said, he's had that before, right? And he says, uh, he just gave me some tips. And he says that, you know, just uh, rub your hands, you know, from your elbows to your tips, never letting go of touching. And it gives you, like, it gives comfort, right? When people touch skin to skin, there's some type of comfort in that. So, you know, uh, I was trying that and it works really well. And uh, it really helped out with this too. But dang, it was, uh, yeah, my first anxiety attack. And I was like, you know, uh, we really need, uh, well, that's why this episode is really good because I think everyone needs healing, right? We need some type of healing, especially during this time of, of the coronavirus. Oh, you know what's even crazier, guys? This is the crazier thing that happened. Two weeks ago, my last Lab 78 episode was about uh, exorcism, right? People who are possessed. Dude, okay, the next day. So mine's Tuesday night, right? The next day on Wednesday, I went home around like 6.45 p.m. I walk into my, like, uh, into the apartment, like, like the, where I live, right? I walk in there and there's a half-naked guy lying on the floor and I'm like going what's this and he's just lying there right his shirt is somewhere else he's just lying on the floor and I'm like what is going on and this guy 
um, he started to like scream, like ah, and he starts hitting the ground. And then he starts repeating, repeating words like, uh, you, you know, the word he kept saying, lemony snickets. I was like, what? But he's like, lemony snickets, lemony snickets. I was like, what the heck is going on? This, this is the day after I talked about demon possession. Then on top of that, uh, he gets up and then he starts walking towards the wall. And then he walks head first into the wall. He goes, boom. And we're like, what? And then he walks the other way in the hallway and you know, the hallway is very narrow. And I was sitting there like, what is going on? And he's walking by me, but get this guys, while he's walking by me, he's staring into my eyes. Like he's like, and walking by me, I'm just like, oh my gosh. I was like really scared, like not, not scared of him, but I was more scared for my safety. Like, is this guy gonna flip out? He walks to the other side and head first into the wall again and he falls on the ground. We were like, there's like five of us like, what the heck is going on? And this was like for an hour. He's just like this, ambulance came, everything else. We're like kind of going, what the heck? And it was, it was so weird because it's the day after we talked about demon possession and we're seeing this guy completely just freaking out and lying on the floor half naked. And I was just like, man, what is the, the chances that after this type of, uh, you know, after the show we had last week on exorcism, that we see something like this happen to you. So that was kind of freaky. I need to drink a coffee, one second. Oh my gosh, okay. So um, today I'm gonna talk about something very cool. Uh, I talked to you, I wanna talk to you about uh, the first time I ever tried healing someone, okay? So you're like going, what? Who, who tries to heal someone? And for those of you who are not in Christianity or not in some type of religion or faith, like healing is like kind of these things that happen in our faith, okay? It happens in it. So for me is, you know, cause I've been a Christian all my life. Like ever since I was born, I was baptized as a baby. My grandfather was a pastor and just tons of different things, right? And for me, it's been something where it's always in the back of your mind, but you gotta be honest, like when you think about healings and stuff and you hear about these stories, number one, it's super interesting, but number two, it's like very like sci-fi or like Lord of the Rings, like Game of Thrones. It's like, you know, there's a wizard that comes like, Rah! and then magic comes out from their hands and then they start healing people. And it's something that you don't really believe. However, for a lot of people, you want to believe it too especially if you're sick, especially if someone you love is sick, like you want people to believe, right? So uh, for me, the, I'll tell you the very first time healing ever happened in my life, okay? It's 14 years old, this is the very first story. And this is where I kind of began to understand about faith healing, okay? 14 years old, my very first experience with healing. What happens? Uh, when I was young, so 14 years old, but even younger than this, uh, I basically hero worshipped my older brother. Like he was everything. He was so cool. He was like an athlete. He was big and strong and fast. And he, you know, he, he was just he was just like, wow, my big brother. And whatever he did, I wanted to do, right? And one thing my brother was really good at was American football. He was an American football player, right? So he's really big guy, just does really well, fast, strong, whatever it is. And I thought to myself, oh, my brother can do it. I can do it, right? So I start, I joined the football team, right? And I'm this really skinny, short kid. And I'm at my first football practice and we're, you know, we're, we're trying football right now, right? Crazy part is, first practice, uh, I grab the ball and I'm running and it's tackle football, right? Someone tackles me on my knee and I hear the sound go, right? It hits my knee and I hear a snap and I was like, oh, what's that? And then I get back up and it hurts a lot. Like it just, it just a lot of pain. But I thought to myself, oh my gosh, if I tell my coach that I'm hurt, then he's, you know, I'm not going to play football anymore. Then I can't do what my brother does. So I didn't tell my coach. I just said, I pretend nothing was happening. But it was such a pain on my right knee, like right here on the outside, that it was so painful that I couldn't turn left. Because, you know, you have to, you know, you run and then you right foot, you step and then you turn left, right? I couldn't turn left. Every time I try to do it, there's tons of pain. So I finished football practice by never turning left. I always turn right. This is crazy, right? So 
14 years old. I'm trying to like be on the football team. I don't want to tell the coach because I don't want to be kicked off the team. And then the next day, you know, the pain was un like unbelievable pain. My dad's like, you okay? We go to the hospital, okay? Now, here's the crazy part. There's a doctor. He says, what's wrong? He's like, that's my knee. And he checks out my knee. So here's my leg like this, right? You like my Super Mario Brothers socks? Yeah, I know, right? So here's my knee like this, right? So he grabs my leg and he starts tilting it this way. So there's no ligament left here. Nothing's holding it here. It, it ripped. So now he's turning my leg like this, this way, because there's nothing holding it. And my doctor's like, oh, this is bad. And I'm like, doctor, how bad is it? He's like, man, you're gonna have to go to a specialist. I'm like, go to a specialist? Like, you're gonna have to go to a specialist. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I thought to myself, I was like, Am I gonna be, and I, am I gonna be okay? Can I play football? And my my doctor's like, no, you're gonna be gone for six months. You probably can't play this entire year. And I was like, no, right? And then you know, I, we, we planned for the specialist the next day. But that night, I was so sad. I was so sad because I knew that I couldn't play football anymore. That while I was lying in my bed, I started crying. I just started crying. I was like, and I'm praying, to, I'm praying at that time. I'm like, oh God, please, please let me play football again, right? Oh, I just want to be like my brother. <laughs> that was my only prayer, this innocent prayer, 13, 14 year old, and I'm just praying, crying. And then this is what happens. All of a sudden, my body starts to shake. My body starts to shake and shake and shake until the point I pass out. So I shook and shook and then poof, I passed out. I woke up in the morning. I was like, huh? Oh. And my dad's like, time to go to the hospital. I was like, what? What? And I touched my knee and my knee was all swollen. It was all swollen up and I could barely bend it. I was like, what the heck? So I get up and it's painful just walking, right? It's painful just walking. I'm like, oh my gosh. We go to the, the specialist. The specialist sits me down and he says, all right, get up on the thing. And I sit down. He says, let me check your knee. So I put my knee up on the, on the desk. He grabs my knee and then once he wants to check again, can he move my leg again? And it's stiff. He's like, hmm, huh. And he says, what are you doing here? I was like, well, the doctor sent me yesterday. He said, I have, you know, I, I'm, I'm not gonna play football for six months. And he's like, no, no, you're fine. Just go home. And I was like, what? And he's like, I said, can I play football? And he's like, yeah, 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 sure you can. I was like, <gasps> and I was like, whoa. And it was the first time I ever experienced anything like this, 14 years old, right? So that was kind of a, a, a prayer on myself. And of course, I was like, oh, this is, this is something cool. Hey, actually, can you turn the air conditioning on? Look, like turn it to like 21. It's so hot in here right now. It's probably because I'm having this really nice latte at the moment. Okay, so this is the first time I experienced it. Second time I experienced it, it wasn't me, it was someone else healing me. I was playing Italy. I, was, I wasn't playing Italy. I was playing soccer in Italy at that time. I was playing on the US team. We we're playing against England at that time in a soccer game. Bo, big game going on. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was, I was the striker at that time. Um, ball flies out. It's me and the last defender. We're running towards it. And instead of taking the ball, he hip checks me. I flip over, land on my shoulder, and I hear a and I heard my bone snap. I heard it snap and I was like, ah! I was like, no, I was like a guy, like a man, like, ah, right? Of course, not like a girl, like, ah, right? I was like, ah, right? And it's like, ah, oh, this bone is like, I heard it snap and it was so much pain. I was like, no, no, too much pain. And then there was this very famous pastor of mine, right? The senior pastor of mine, I see him from across the field and he's running towards me, right? And I, in my head is like, oh my gosh, I know this pastor has healed many people before. He's healed many people before, so I have to believe. I've got to believe. I was like, okay, just believe. Sky, you got to believe. So I thought to myself, all right, all right, I believe, I believe, I believe, right? And he looks at me and he says, hey, where does it hurt? I was like, ah, ah, right? He grabs my arm, right? So he's holding my arm like this, and this is where it hurts. And then he puts his hand up like this, and I'm like going, whoa, like, is he gonna do some type of like magical, like, in the name of God? And I was like, something like crazy, right? So I'm like, oh, is this gonna happen? He's like, oh, and he, I'm looking like, huh? And, he's, and then he says, in, in, he says, be healed. But he doesn't just say be healed. He takes his hand and he slaps me on my shoulder. And I'm like, ah! right? 
and he says, be healed. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm screaming. And he does it three times. He's like, be healed, pa, be healed, pa. I'm like, be healed, ah, be healed, pa, right? So I was in so much pain right there. I'm like, like what is happening, right? He grabs my arm, shakes it and says, okay, get up, go. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? Am I, am I healed? Like what, what's going on? And then uh, they, they, they wrapped my arm and then I started playing soccer for the rest of the rest of the tournament. Start playing, I play soccer again. Now, what happens is, uh, a month later, I'm back in the States, I'm in Los Angeles, and I'm playing soccer with some friends. And exact same thing happens, two of us going for a ball, someone kicks my foot, I flip over, land on my shoulder again. The exact same thing. And I was just like, screaming, and it was the worst pain. They take me to the hospital, they give me an x-ray. And of course, you know, like, it was so much pain that I was, I was like, yeah, I was crying. Okay, I was crying. You know, I was young. I was like 20 years old. I was crying. I was like so much pain. And I was like kind of in my head. I was like, oh my gosh. Like I cried in front of these girls. So I hope it's broken because then it's a good reason for me to cry, right? <laughs> like going, gosh, if, if it's not broken, I'm going to look like such a, like, <laughs> like a little wuss, right? <laughs> so what happens is he, he, they, the, the doctor comes out and says, hey, uh, I was like, doctor, am I okay? He's like, Yep, nothing's broken. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, and then what happens is he said, oh, but come here, let me show you the x-ray. So he takes me over to the x-ray and he, I can see my collarbone right here on the x-ray. But it's interesting because you have the collarbone. So you see both sides, right? Once they're both like, you know, you see collarbones, but on this side, in the middle of the collarbone, it's really thick. It's very thick. And the doctor says to me, he says, you see that? And I'm like going, yeah, what is that? And he says, well, what happens is when you break your bones, your body has this amazing reaction where it doesn't want to break in the same place again. So it builds more bone around it. So it becomes strong. So I thought to myself, I was like, huh, I've never broke my collarbone before. He's like, no, 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 no. You broke it before, but it healed perfectly. And I was like, what? And then I was like, Oh, it was the month ago where I actually got it, you know, when, when, when I broke it and then that pastor healed me and I was like, oh, no way. Okay. So that it actually was healed. Right? So at that point, that was the second time. But the real story I'm going to tell you guys today is a story when I did my first healing on someone else, right? Do it to yourself. It's like, okay, someone else do it for you. You're like, okay. But doing it for someone else is a very daunting task, right? So this is like, I would say 15, 16 years ago, I was a missionary in South Africa. And at that time, the missions were going really well, okay? Super well. Uh, we were, I was speaking on campus and the campus I was at had 60,000 students. I think it's called Tux, right? One of the, the largest universities in South Africa huge university we're like wow it's going so great and now i'm preparing uh to speak at uh at, at you know at, at a meeting right so i'm like all right let's do it so i'm preparing to speak at this meeting I'm like okay what's going on and um uh, i'm preparing and at home and i'm looking at this message and this is like you know you know when you listen to a sermon on sunday you get a sunday message and it was a very interesting sermon because it came from the perspective of jesus and what Jesus was saying, you know, in the sermon, Jesus is saying, I believe in you, but why don't you believe in me? Right? And it's a really interesting, it's like, it's kind of like, what? Jesus believes in me, but why don't I believe in him? But I'm like, no, I believe in you. You know, I believe in you. What are you talking about? And then the sermon is basically like, uh, if you really believed in me, and if you had faith, even the small size of a mustard seed, you can make miracles happen. You can heal people, cast out this, and do this and do this and do this, right? And I thought to myself, I'm like, oh, okay, I don't do any of those things. Do I really, do I really believe, right? So as I'm preparing, all of a sudden I hear a voice. Okay, I'm not crazy guys, I just heard a voice. And the voice says, heal them tonight. And I was like, huh? I'm like, what do you mean? And the voice came again and said, heal them tonight. And I was like, what? You mean like this, the, the, I'm going to, sp I'm speaking tonight at the, like, you want me to heal people tonight? And the very first thought I said was, 
but what if no one gets healed, right? Like, what if, what if, what if I, what if I'm like, here, be healed, and everyone's just like, ah, I still have pain. Like, I was sitting there like going, oh, but God, what if I look stupid? Like, what if I, you know, it's like, it's gonna be so crazy. I'm just like, uh, God, what? Are you sure? And I said, I said to myself, God, I, I don't think, no, I don't think it's gonna happen because I don't think I can do anything. So, you know, I, I'm sorry, right? And then the message came back is, I believe in you, why don't you believe in me? If you have faith just this small as a mustard seed, you can make miracles happen. And I was like, oh no, right? So I was like, oh, maybe I don't have faith this small as a mustard seed, oh no, right? And it's like, heal them tonight. And you know what I did? I became a little bit like uh, frustrated with God. So I'm like, you know, I told God, fine, fine. I'll heal them tonight, but you see, watch, nothing's gonna happen, right? You're gonna make me look stupid, fine. I'm gonna go tonight and heal them, right? So I'm in this type of mode, like, oh no, right? So I end up going to the university, 7.30 p.m. start, and I'm sitting in my head like, am I really gonna do this? Am I really gonna start healing people tonight? Like, I've never done this before. These are all strangers, like, wow. Then I find out, um, we're speaking to one department in the university. Guess which department it is? It's the medical department. So I'm like, God, you want me to heal people who are learning how to heal people? Like, are you kidding me? And I was freaking out like, no, God, this is crazy. I can't do this, right? And then they're like, and please welcome Missionary Sky. I'm like, no. And I come out and I'm like, just so defeated when I come out like, hi guys, how's it going, right? And then I start to speak first. So, you know, of course I start to speak and I start talking about God, you know, God believes in you and you're not even perfect, but why don't you believe in this perfect God? And I start preaching and all of a sudden, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I had like fire coming from my lips. I was like, and believe, believe, and people, you could see their hearts go, oh, I'm on fire, right? It was like, it was like, it was really good. And I was speaking for about 40 minutes. About 40 minutes I speak, and then in, you know, at the 40, 45 minute mark, something happens. A voice in my heart says, do it now. And I was like, oh. And I, and I froze. And I'm like, what? And then God spoke to my heart and said, do it now. And I was like, oh. And I thought to myself, am I really gonna do this? And here I am frozen. Everyone's looking at me. And I'm like, everyone close your eyes, right? Cause everyone was staring at me. It's like, everyone close your eyes. Like, don't look at me. So I close my eyes like, okay, God, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm really gonna do this. And then I, and then I, sa I said it, I said this, anyone who needs healing tonight, whether it's you, your family, your friends, come up to the front, right? And after I said this, I started praying in my head. I was like, God, please let everyone be healthy so no one comes to the front. Please God, right? Let no one come up, right? And I'm like, please, right? And then, I open my eyes, I look behind me, and there's 20 people lined up. And I was like, oh my goodness, like what am I gonna do? And I'm freaking out like, no, no, like this can't be true, right? And I turn around like, God, I've never done this before. Cause you know, when you watch on TV, the faith healing and stuff, like you see like some dude walk up like, and the people are like, ah! And they fall over and stuff. And I was like, gosh, I can't do that. This is too much for me. Okay, this is crazy. So what do I do? Okay. So I walk up to the first person and this is girl and she's looking at me like with these like pure like she's like right and I'm like oh my gosh god I think she's expecting something to happen right now right so I look at her and I was like hi what can I pray for you about right and I thought to myself god this is the first person I'm going to pray for so can you make it a little bit easy? You know, it's the first one, you know, like backache, headache, you know, something, something easy. I need, I need a good warm up, a warm up starting person to heal, right? And she looks at me and says, my father has cancer. And I was like, ah! I'm like, oh, no, no. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm like, God. And I'm going to tell you this at that moment, you know what I said to God? I said, I give up. I can't do this. 
I'm like, I can't do this. I seriously, I can't do this. God, are you kidding me? She wants me to heal her dad of cancer, right? That's why she's a doctor. That's why she's going to medical school. How can I do this? But the craziest part was, this is the craziest part. At that moment, another, like I had this epiphany, this realization, and the realization at that moment when I was complaining to God saying, I can't do this, is when I realized why you only need mustard seed size faith. Because mustard seed's so small, right? It's because I'm not doing any of the work. I'm just doing this small part, but I know that it's God doing the work, right? So I realized, oh, it's me. I just got to try. I got to just get, let God work. And then God's going to do all the healing and God's going to do all the work. Okay. All right. Fine. Let's do it. Right? So I prayed for this person. Right? And after I prayed for them, I went to the next person. And after them, I prayed to the next person. And I'm going to tell you guys, so one person was getting breast cancer surgery the next day. Someone else was had, had AIDS. Right? They had so many of the, like the worst problems. I was like, God, did you bring like the 20 sickest people here right now? Right? Just to do this. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And all 20 people, about 45 minutes, an hour later, finished everything. And the whole event finished. I went to sit down and I was like, you know what? That mustard seed faith means you just got to try. And you tried, Sky. So good job. That's all you're supposed to do. What? It's not me that heals. It's God that does all the healing. So you did your job. And me and the other people that were working together, we're all happy. We're like, oh, thank God, right? Wow, great job today. I was like, okay. And then this girl walks up to us and she's like, Missionary Sky. And I was like, hey. And she was, um, she was one of the people we prayed for. And she comes up and says, hey, um, you know, we prayed for my grandma that I love so much. Now, so this, this girl, her grandmother, is in another city and she's bedridden. She can't even get out of bed. She's so sick. Their family's so poor. They can't even uh, like afford like uh, medicine or anything. So basically the doctor said she's just gonna die in bed, right? This girl loves her grandma so much. When I was praying for her, she was crying as she's receiving prayer for her grandmother. And uh, she says to me, hey, uh, Missionary Sky. I was like, yeah? He's like, yeah, you know, you pray for my grandmother. And uh, after you prayed for her, I was inspired to go call her. So after she ran up to her room, she called her grandma. And of course her mom's home, the mom picks up the phone. And uh, this girl tells me, well, I asked my mom, hey, how is grandmother doing? And then the mother says, I don't know what happened, but she just got out of bed and now she's doing the gardening. Me and the, the other guys with me were just like, it works. <laughs> we're like going, it actually, this is crazy. And we're like, wow, it really happened. Right? So we're like so excited because that's like our first healing we've done together. But then this, it didn't even end there. After that, I went to Australia. And what happened three months later, there was uh, one of the people I prayed for during that, you know, during that, that healing session. This guy calls me three months later and he says, he's like, Missionary Sky, there's something crazy I got to tell you. I was like, what is it? Remember when you prayed for my dad? Now, what, what, the, what, what happened to this person was their father is an alcoholic. Number two is the father's about to divorce. And number three is what? Number three is uh, he doesn't go to church, doesn't believe in God, right? And we prayed for these three things for his dad. He calls me three months later and he says, he says, Missionary Sky, you have, do you know what just happened? And we're like, uh, what happened? He's like, remember we prayed for my dad's, you know, for the alcoholism? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, my dad stopped drinking. And we're like, what? And we're like, whoa, this is so crazy. He's like, no, 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 that's not it. That's not it. What, what else is it? He's like, and my parents are not going to divorce anymore. And we're like, what? That's so crazy. And then finally he says, and that's not it either. He says, now my dad's coming to church with me. And we're like, he answered all three healing prayers. And we were just so blown out of our mind, right? Now, here's the one thing I want to tell you guys. Yes, it's amazing that this happened. Yes, healing happened at that time. We're like, oh my goodness, so amazing. But let me tell you one thing. One of the biggest problems we have, I'm going to talk about, this is not just faith. We're talking about life in general. 
The reason why people don't experience life and the reason why people don't experience these amazing events. You know, one of the things people always tell me is that they always ask me, Sky, why do you have so many crazy stories? You know what I mean? Why do you have so many crazy stories? Like, I don't have any stories, but you have so many stories of so many things. And my biggest realization in my life is this. If you don't try things, you'll never have an experience, right? And one of the things is we're kind of like me when God said, heal them. And what's the first thing we do? Oh, but what if it doesn't happen? Oh, but what if it doesn't happen? What if nothing happens? And what if I, you know, I look stupid? And what about this? And what about that? It's true, right? One of the things when it comes to us experiencing anything in life is we stop ourselves to even try it, right? And that's what you call the mustard seed faith is mustard seed faith means it's possible something can happen. You don't know. Right? Should I go to the job interview? Oh, I'm not going to make it. How do you know? Right? Oh, you should try to have this new experience. No, no, no. But what if nothing happens? But what if something happens? A lot of times in life, one of the biggest things that holds us back is you basically don't even allow yourself to try something. In my life, I'm going to tell you this. I've had, because I'm very adventurous and daring, I try everything. Right? Like even when it comes to food, I've tried alligator, I've tried bear, I've tried horse, I've tried warthog, I've tried um, like, you know, crickets and like everything. I try everything, right? And because of that, I always get new experiences. But imagine this, if you always do the things you normally do, you never get new experiences. You're always stuck with those things. And I'm telling you guys this, is that our lives, you know, your life is very, very short. And your life, you don't have, you know, there's, there's only a limited amount of time, meaning I'm not going to say like you're going to die tomorrow, but what I'm saying is you have a limited time of this year, things to experience in the pandemic, new things to learn in the pandemic, and you'll only get it in the pandemic, whether it's learning how to cook, whether it's learning how to crochet, learning how to do graphic design, learning how to do any one of these things. Right now is the perfect time in the pandemic when you're working from home and doing so many things from home. Trust me. Because when everything opens up, you're not going to be home anymore. And then you're never going to have that time again. This year and a half of the pandemic, it's only going to happen once. And all the things you need to try, they're only going to happen once. And that's why you got to try. You got to try new things. The only reason we don't have these crazy experiences is because we never actually try. You just got to do. And you got to have that small mustard seed faith that tells you what is, hey, Something might not happen, but guess what? Something could. Can you imagine if I didn't go to that night and I didn't, you know, like put myself out and say, okay, who wants to be healed? Then those two people, the grandmother and the father would never have been healed. It never would have happened. And all I would say to myself is, God, no, nothing's going to happen, so I'm not going to do it. We have to experience, right? And you can't be afraid to experience something new. You just got to do it, right? Your life in your 20s, is actually only 10 years. You know how fast 10 years goes by? 10 years is fast. You know what? Some of you are already like 28 and 29. Like you're right on 30 and you're going to be like, ah, once I hit 30, ah, like I'm hitting 40. When I hit 40, I'm like, what happened to my 30s? But now I'm already 43. I'm like, what happened to 42 and 41? What happened to those years? The, the years go by so fast, guys. We've passed the halfway mark of 2021. As crazy as that sounds. You have to experience a lot, try a lot of things, make a lot of mistakes, make a lot of successes. And this is when you're going to have tons of these stories. Guys, I've, I've done a lot of stupid things and I can tell you a lot of stupid stories I have. I have tons of stupid stories because I tried at least. Didn't work and I move on, right? And whether you have faith or don't have faith, in life, you got to try a lot of things out. Try it out, right? And the only reason you don't have experiences and stories is because you never tried. You always stopped yourself before doing it. Those of you with faith, you know, I'm a pastor and a missionary too. One thing I'm telling you guys is the only reason you've never seen a miracle or the only reason you've never done one because you've never tried. That's the big thing. That's a huge issue, right? So I, I hope, you know, that as we're going through a lot of difficult things right now, this pandemic, you know, I had an anxiety attack just before and uh, it's one thing that we all need is a little bit of healing, right? And I really hope that whether you have faith or not, whether, you know, I know here in, in uh, Malaysia, we have a ton of Muslims here. They're praying like 5, 10, 15, 20 times a day too, right? Got to have a little faith, right? In those things, 
And once you have that faith, you guys are going to start to see a lot of things that you never thought were possible. Okay. So that is the end of today's show. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Uh, that, you know, uh, I hope that you were inspired a bit and motivated for what you can do during this time of the pandemic. Uh, but those of you uh, joining us for the first time, go ahead, hit the subscribe button if you can and uh, like and comment below. And of course, our comment, uh, a question is, have you ever, do you believe in healing? Have you ever seen it happen, right? Yeah, maybe some of you have seen it happen or not. And of course, those of you guys want to sponsor us here uh, on the Espresso with Sky uh, YouTube channel, go ahead and either PayPal or buy me a coffee. And that's all in the description. Everyone have an awesome day. Hope you get some healing from today's, uh, today's episode. And we'll see you guys again. Bye-bye. Time for another coffee.